North Island is committed to creating a safe haven for the endemic species in Seychelles. We have been working together with Wildlife Act for over five years, whereby ecotourist volunteers assist us in the day-to-day -day running of our conservation projects. My name is Simon Morgan and I'm a co-founder and trustee of Wildlife Act. We implement professional and strategic monitoring and research to enable and inform the conservation management of threatened species. So we're based in South Africa in Zululand region and we also support uh, work in the Seychelles um, on North Island. And the work that we do in the Seychelles is to support an island restoration project on North Island uh, with the focus on a number of things. One is the removal of alien vegetation from the island to try and restore the natural system as much as possible um, with the aim of making it more conducive to hosting endemic species that lived there previously. So this little island, even though it's really small, it's, it's kind of ability to maintain a high diversity of, of biodiversity is, is incredible um, if it's given the opportunity to do so. Historically, it was used for growing coconuts and the coconut plantations have kind of overrun the island. The project sources seeds from neighboring islands and kind of grows little seedlings and, and uses those to kind of replant in those spaces where and the coconuts are growing. There's also one or two other invasive um, plants that are, that are in the space that are removed and then replanting of, of native species is happening. And there's also been the reintroduction of a couple of species onto the island, for example, the Seychelles white eye, and which has been a very successful project. One of our goals is to introduce the Seychelles magpie robin to the island, with the translocation of birds due to take place at the end of this year. So the project also works with the turtles that come and breed on, on the island, and a lot of that is monitoring of the incursion of turtles onto the island uh, to lay eggs, and the monitoring of those nests, and, and to kind of look at nest success. Turtles play a great role in kind of maintenance of coral reefs and the system at large. They have been hammered in the past due to getting caught up in fishing nets and have been targeted specifically. So that's always a, a big issue. But yeah, turtles have their niche in, a, in an ecosystem. There's definitely kind of, it's called a ripple effects. If, if you remove or mess with one element within a system, you're gonna see kind of follow impacts. And that's true into the fisheries even just normal catching or the bycatch and whether it's turtles or sharks and the, and the others in the environment that can, can be detrimental to the functioning of those systems. Every morning the ecotourists do a loop around the island um, on the beaches looking to see where a turtle has kind of walked up onto the shoreline and up into, into the top of the dunes and you can see where a nest has been laid and then we mark that point and actually use the coconut with a little label on there that we and write on of the date that it happened in the species and then an expected date of you know when that hatching would occur as well as you can also see when an emergence has happened and when the youngsters have come out and you can kind of see their little tracks coming down so you can kind of note what's happened and then you can actually go in and count the number of eggs that have hatched from that and see what kind of success that you've had. So something that the ecotourists also do is they um, spend a lot of time on the island picking up trash that gets washed up and looking at the plastics. After spending a bit of time there, you get a real sense of the impact that waste has in, a, in the environment. And you can imagine if we weren't clearing this kind of debris and these plastics from these beaches is that, that buildup would actually start creating a layer that, for example, with the turtles, makes it very difficult for them to access certain areas of the beach or they'll get tangled up in whether it's old fishing lines or plastic rings or whatever the case might be. It's such a far removed system and you can imagine that a lot of these plastics that are floating around aren't even coming from the main islands. This is just plastic waste that's out there in, in the system that kind of comes past into these, these environments. So a big eye opener and something that's just a slight insight into what's happening globally um, with plastic. So Wildlife Act has set up a fairly unique and previously sustainable funding mechanism through the engagement with ecotourists um, in the form of volunteerism. The people come across and participate and get a conservation experience on our day-to-day -day conservation efforts. A lot of it is monitoring of important populations and priority species or actively trying to restore certain areas like for example in the Seychelles and the island. The Wildlife Act Ecotourism Project provides both funding for the conservation goals as well as the hands-on day-to-day work that is required for us to reach these targets. 
The funding and assistance provided by the Wildlife Act program is invaluable in reaching our conservation goals, and we hope that with your assistance, we'll be able to keep these projects moving forward during this trying time. So during this time of shutdown, I think it's really important that people are aware of some of the drivers of what caused this in the first place. It's clear that COVID-19 is a zoonotic disease. There was transmission from wildlife into humans and from bats specifically to humans. There's still a lot of uncertainty about um, how that jump happened. The point being is that with a massive illegal wildlife trade globally, there's a lot of opportunities for zoonotic spillover of these kind of diseases into our space. So just during this time for people to take some time to really investigate and understand how these drivers are happening and what's happening locally in their, in their area and to try and support local conservation organizations that are working against illegal wildlife trade, um, especially now during this time when a shutdown is going to cause a possible resurgence and an increase in poaching, especially in some of the rural communities. Thank you for all your support and for watching this video. If you'd like to learn more about what we're doing and how you can get involved, please visit wildlifeact.com.